Uh, in the meantime, I will make a thing. So, um, I made this just before the stream. Um, uh, and I thought I'd show you how to make it. It's just a nice little thing involving paint, which was another request someone had. It's not quite probably what they wanted, what they were thinking of. But hey, they just can't use us. So, um, I'm using the paint stuff and just drawing a line using a ruler and making each of them go down like that and then one of them goes across like that so the idea is this looks oh, I don't even need that um, this looks like a chalk um, like chalk tally markings thing on a board or something um, problem is I did it wrong so first we want that, then we want a new one, and oh, then another new one, then another new one, then one that goes across. Uh, so that's gone back for some reason. Cool. Um, I'll probably make this a slightly simplified version because there was like some problems involving sound that I took a while figuring out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to animate these so that they like draw out the. Uh, let's I guess you see things better. Um, so we can draw out um, up to a a inputted number. It will draw out that many um, lines and kind of tally it up for you, like a cute display. Um, so I think I'll start by defining our inputs. So. Oh, well, big. That's interesting. Um, uh -huh. uh, that one we'll need later. Okay, and then we'll put all all of this in one group like that. And inputs and input nodes and output nodes that are just hanging around in the group. They'll still show outside. I don't have x-ray on or anything, they just still show so that you can plug things into them, which is real useful. So we'll have a value slider, uh, we don't need the uh, grid now, okay. um, to input a value to here. So uh, we'll have this passed into the actual chip like that. Uh, like that. So, um, first let's look at how we animate these. So, in here, uh, in the stroke properties, there is a start position and an end position. There's flex density and all this kind of stuff. Uh, we're just going to use the end point. So, we're going to start it at zero and animate it so that it goes. To the end. Um, uh, actually, just sort of a cool, a different way of doing it. I'll probably do that. Test it out. Okay. So uh, we're still going to use that. So then it looks like it's kind of being drawn like that, which is pretty neat. Um, so we can plug in a value. Like that and like animate it being drawn. Um, cool. So the word did it in my version was use a timer because that gives a value between zero and one 
that changes over this amount of time. So if you play it over five seconds, this will draw out. Um, but I think we will do it a slightly different way, um, but should be less complicated. Uh, so I had like timers and they'd feed into the next timer and the next timer. Um, and it was a bit like there was a lot of logic going on for for some for a fairly simple animation. So we'll do this a slightly different way and see if we can get it to work. So I'm going to put it on uh, uh, beats instead of real time, so that we have these kind of snap points. Let's make that thinner, and we have five strokes, so we'll have five bars. Okay, so then we have a keyframe, uh, and we'll set, we'll just manually set that endpoint to zero, and then we'll have another keyframe, and it's disappeared. Um, so the endpoint to full, and have it linearly, and so then rewind. Like that. So uh, in reality, you'll probably have this play faster. Uh, but the way we're going to do it, this this playback speed won't matter anyway. So um, then we do the same for the others, and this will take a bit of time. I apologise. Uh -huh. Uh, that's actually make some empty ones. So we'll just copy them like that. Okay, and then a third one. L1 and right to go between the ones on the that are all connected on that row. Uh, so yeah, we want to store that as being full. Okay, and then fourth one. Mm, oh, so it's zero, and then to one, and then on the strike through. So that's two, zero, and then to one. Okay. So now when we play it, let's have, ah, so because um, uh, the it's only set to zero at this point, then we need to expand it, oh, expand it out to be from the beginning. That's funny, I don't know why that's not expanding. There we go. And once you're expanding it enough, you get the little handles on the side. Like that. Okay. And the strike through. Cool. So um, that part works. Now we want to be able to play this to a particular point and stop there. We will do that. Uh, if you were here just a moment ago earlier in the stream, I talked about how you can send a value into here between 0 and 1 to get it to go to that point in the, the uh, timeline um, and you can use a timer for that because that sends us, uh, the progress between 0 and 1 that this makes over time um, and we will use the positional setting which means you tell it a uh, you give it a signal here which tells it what percentage along 
to you want it to be at and then it will play time to get to that point and then stop so if we give it a value play time we haven't given it we, uh, it's at zero so it will stay at zero if we go one it will go all the way to the end and we'll make this quicker. so it will try and get to one and then if we put it at 0 0.5 it will stop at 0 0.5 and the speed it will go at is uh, in real time. So um, every second that passes, it moves one second along to get the, to the percentage that you're sending it into the play. So, um, so this is how we'll use this value. So let's say we want it to show three on the tally. Um, so we want it to be, and there's five, so it's, um, uh, if it was, a, a, if this was at five, you want it to send this to one, so it'll go all the way to the end. So, um, but when it's a zero, we want it to be at zero. So that sounds like we're mapping values. So signal manipulator, if you go into custom remapper, we can take in a, a value range of whatever we set at the moment it's just 0 to 1 we want it to be 0 to 5 and unfortunately you can't use L1 and square on that currently but you can use up and down so when it's between 0 and 5 um, it will like shrink it down to be a value between 0 and 1 in the same like it's just dividing it by 5 effectively in this case, um, so then we'll plug that into there, and then let's just see how that works. So, it works, and actually, if we put it to zero, it'll it'll like just delete those, which probably isn't what we want, but you know. Um, but also, if we send it a value between them, then it will go to that that progress through the timeline. Um, but uh, for this, I, I don't think it matters too much. We could like do some uh, calculator stuff to make sure this is a logical round number. But um, I think it will be fine as it is. So because that's beyond the five that we want um, it just plays the whole thing right to the end and stops there so let's yeah so the next stage is to use this part Ooh, the moment you've all been waiting for um, this part here is to so that if we have a number that's more than five we can get uh, the next tally to show those after this tally has showed these. So um, we'll have, we'll have to figure out if this is at the end. The trigger is only a pulse, so that won't be useful. But we have a playhead position, which just like when we input a playhead position, it's between zero at the beginning and one at the end. That's the same for the playhead position coming out. So let's use a calculator. If it's equal to 1, I used L1 and square to direct direct input a number there. Um, and I'll plug that in there. So when we're at 1, which means we're at the end of the timeline, then we'll allow the next one to play and we'll send it the value that's left over. So we'll need to subtract uh, this value, which is the desired the desired um, number of tallies we want, uh, and we'll subtract five from it because by this time we'll have already done five. 
and uh, and this will just power this and it will send it out there okay so then we can we can copy this whole tally thing and wire that into there so now it takes a value 11 it will play through these until it gets to the very end of that animation then it will send 11 minus 5 which is 6 so then this will receive 6 and play through those so actually I'll make it like that so it will only send 3 and we'll see 3 more tallies on there hopefully so let's play time 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 job done so then you can have as many of those as you want and you can wire them all up Uh -huh. And now we can get up to so we can get up to twenty five. So let's make that a bigger number. And we can actually uh oh that was uh we want to make this faster really. So we for that we can just make this time smaller. So it takes one second to play that whole thing. So that's a bit better. Um, uh, and I'll um, do this now. I'll just add a sound effect. Um, sound effect. Uh, um, collections. It's it's kind of unfortunate. You can't just get that the mm collection from there you have to go through here uh, and I'm already in here so I found one in sound effects um, I'm working on something to submit to the jam involving chalk tally marks and bean bags stay tuned um, so that one. Uh, that one no I think it was in there there you go so uh, I'll take it in there so before because it was all logic up it was real hard to get this to this get this to work nicely um, uh, I tend to um, while I'm making stuff I just tend to try and spread it all out they tend to become really huge um but all the all the wires are nice and like curvy and um don't overlap too much that's like mildly annoying so i will move it um and then once all the logic is actually done then i start like routing it with these pins and what not if if it's necessary ah that's better um Uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a good habit to get into. Give the nodes colors and names and icons, and same for chips. Okay, so let's just line this up, and what we'll do is we'll turn it onto an instrument. So then we can go in here, and we can have five d scrapes over the five bars, and have little gaps in between each one of them so that um sounds good actually and we want this to be a little higher because it's only a little chalk thing instead of uh 
and I'll make that louder. And I'll make it for a random point. And I will actually, as I'm here, add an effect field into here that increases the volume. Uh, and then decrease this volume again. See if so at the beginning, as we start the thing, it'll like be a little louder, I think. And I'll turn on that beginning, that end. Uh, oh. Cool, I think that'll do. Um, and then I'll record like one of these. I'll actually make this make the whole timeline slower, so I have better chance. Um, okay, so we got one of those, so that we can use the um, use that effect field, and now we can just stretch it out to the right time. Cool, so now we have those four separate notes and they go across there, so uh, so when each, each one starts it kind of has, I, th I think I'll lower the effect of that, um, it has like, it starts a different uh, note and because of that it grabs a different time on here, so if I play time it grabs a different like start point from there, so then they sound like new um new like marks being made um cool so uh, oh, that's grab that and for our big finish. Oh, I'm forgetting. Yeah, that'll do. Ah, I think I know what that is. That's because the note is being held on at the end of that. Oh no, let's see. If we can get away with it, I'll just... So let's just try fixing it in here first. So I think all that's happening is it's stopping on one of these bars, but then it's still there. So we'll make this slightly shorter and see if that works. Uh, use L1 and X to select over those columns. And no one. Ah, so it's the beginning that was the problem. So let's double tap X to select all of them and give the beginning a little gap. Should be. Interesting. It's there, 
it's not on a note. Let's just take this completely out. Turn all that stuff off. It's so close. So then we have have to uh, actually if I just make it play to the end. Hmm. So let's get timer position. Um, that works. Oh. Uh. Oh, maybe it's because all the other ones were still on it. Um, yeah. Let's try that end. It works. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> I have chalkboard. Oh. So that note's still playing. I believe. So I'm making it shorter is the wrong one. And let's just double check if I make that Let's just try it bit by bit. Okay, so let's make that I can even reduce it. Cool, so that's it's working. Now uh because if you're in the middle that note is still on. We probably would want to round it to make sure it doesn't just keep on uh, having the scribbling sound. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> I guess it doesn't because it just becomes zero, so then they all start playing back again. But that's probably not the, how you do the erasing anyway. But and there you go. So just to be clear, the way you do the rounding is you do round down and have everything plug into there instead. Uh, like that. 